So a few weeks ago, I put out this video about 3D printing stuff for doomsday prepping. And in that video, I said this, I need green beans. No, 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 not that, the other thing. Also carabiners. When I printed this, I thought, who's gonna use a plastic carabiner? But when I printed this, I was kind of blown away with how strong it is. I was kind of blown away how strong that simple low infill carabiner was. And so what I did was I went ahead and 3D printed some 100% infill carabiners like these to test and see how much of a force that they could withstand. So on this episode of Tested, I'm gonna be taking these 3D printed carabiners to the ultimate torture test. I've built a simple jig to kind of measure how much force that they can take. So let's head out into the workshop and get started. All right, and so once again, today we're gonna to be testing these various materials and these carabiners. They're all the same design, all the same specs, printed with manufacturer's recommendations for the various filament types. We have ABS, PLA+, nylon carbon fiber, and of last pet G. All of these have been sitting in the building to acclimatize and so they're all the same temperature. And this is the testing jig. So again, to keep things as fair as possible, I have this little hand winch here. It's all bolted down. Everything's bolted to the table. Our trusty sawhorse from the last testing episode. And we've got our crane scale here to take the measurement. Now, if you saw the last tested video, I kind of caught a little bit of flack and rightly so because everything wasn't exactly one for one. The direction of the pole wasn't exactly straight up and down. It wasn't exactly the same for all the different candidates. Kind of got the basic idea, but for this one, I wanted to improve a little bit, but not too much because I want to make sure that I have room to improve next time so you're continued to watch the videos whenever I put them out. That's the thinking anyway. So anyway, I was going to use a pulley originally to do that, and I've all only got this 22,000 pound snatch block. I don't have a regular pulley anywhere. So what I've done is run the cable through this little shackle here at the bottom. Now, if I was tugging a boat or pulling a tree stump or something, I probably wouldn't do this because of the abrasion, but this is a pretty smooth surface and I don't imagine that we'll be putting many thousands of pounds of force on these plastic carabiners. So what I'm going to do is hitch these up, start exerting force on it, I'm going to do it very slowly, very methodically, and try to get as close as I possibly can and hopefully the camera can catch the total weight and where it begins to break, which is another important consideration too because I thought I wanted to use maybe a piece of rope or something to kind of spread out the load on the carabiner instead of something metal that's going to be applying all of its force into one concentrated area. But then I thought, why am I giving special considerations to this? Because if you're testing this for real life use, you're not gonna be very meticulous about it. You're just gonna clip this on to maybe something metal, maybe a chain, and it's gonna be you know subject to those forces in a concentrated area. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure I use the same thing every time and then I hitch it up in the same place every time. With that said, let's start the test. First candidate, PLA. I'm gonna screw all of these in until the last thread is covered and that way we know that there's a, an even number of contact points on the threads versus the nut of the carabiner. Now I have to decide which side want, I want to uh, shoulder the, the weight. So over here, you know, all the stress is gonna be on the body. Over here, the stress, at least in my mind, is going to be on the threads and the nut. And mainly, it's gonna be here where the pin comes into place. That's, if I had to, if I was a betting man without doing this prior, I'd say where the pin goes in is gonna be where we're gonna see the breakage because that's the thinnest part of the model. It's where it hinges. This has a lot of contact. This is all 100% solid. So again, if I had to guess, it would be here. And so if I'm exerting pressure in this way, perhaps it's better to do it like this. Be honest, I think I'd probably rather just find the spot that is where it's likely to sink to because if it's perfectly level, it's gonna wanna favor one side versus the other. So I'm thinking this is probably gonna be the best way. And to keep everything absolutely even, I'm gonna start with my scale with nothing attached to make sure I get a full zero. Actually, I'm gonna tear it with the S hook in place. So now we know exactly how much is being applied. So I'm gonna to have to review the footage, but as I crank the winch, the amount of force increases, I don't know, exponentially, but it starts to go up you know, by a heavier factor because everything's taut, everything's where it's gonna be. But shockingly, the break occurred here at the main body uh, and also seemingly at the threads as well. So 
I'm not sure if maybe perhaps there was a break and then the action of it coming apart is what broke this. I have to review the footage. All right, so next up is gonna be Pet G. Again, all to manufacturer spec. This is Elegoo Pet G Pro, 100% screwed in to the last thread is no longer visible. Right there. And let's go for it. Ninety three pounds. All right, and so we'll have to review the tape, but taking a look here at our pet G sample. Looks like the break occurred in a similar spot, but we have three distinct pieces here. Looks like perhaps it broke and then the as the pressure from it coming off is what snapped the bottom part of the uh, the locking nut here. All right, next up on the docket, ABS. This is Polymaker ABS in blue. This is what I printed uh, a lot of my dummy 13 skeletons in. Again, 100% screwed in until no threads are visible. We're gonna load it up and test her out. So poor showing from ABS. All right, I saw it starting to crack before I even got two more cranks in. It seems like uh, it just a, some kind of fissure opened up. Again, these are all at 100%. You can kind of see the layer lines in the middle, so maybe the temperature on the PET-G or the ABS not dialed up adequately. Uh, but yeah, very quick break there. I don't know if I want to give it a mulligan and wait for another one to print, but uh, let me know in the comments if you think I should retest this one. And finally, our big swinger, the PA612CF. This is Fiberon from Polymaker. Again, uh, keep trying to keep everything one-to-one. -one. When this stuff prints, it's a little, um, it's a little different, like the surface texture and stuff like that. And as such, I was kind of having a time getting the threads all the way in. So I've got quite a few threads showing. So I'm gonna put on a glove because I don't wanna be abrading my hand against this carbon fiber material and see if I can get some more threads on there. I don't, it's not misthreaded because it's pretty well lined up as far as you know, really I can tell. Uh, so let's see if we can't tighten this up a little bit. I think it was just me being a, a pussy about screwing it in and not like having my hand too tight on it because uh, just some soft grip pliers to kind of do it. It was very easy to get it on there. So again, Thread it all the way. Let's load it up and see if this nylon carbon fiber can take the heat. Well, not heat, we know it can take heat, but can it take the load? Can you take the load? It's the same pickup line that you worked on my wife. I can feel this one. I can feel this one. This is gonna be it. Woo! Woo! The nylon carbon fiber off its poor showing with the shelf bracket test seeming to come through here on this test. Again, we're gonna have to check the numbers. Um, if I had to guess just based on how much uh, force I was exerting on the winch, I'm gonna say this one's first, PLA second, PET G third, ABS fourth. Uh, but again, looking at the brakes here, looks like again, similar spot. And when we had the load rigged up, we had it with this on the bottom, everything pulling here. So again, this seems to be where most of the stress is occurring either that or well yeah i mean that that makes sense or just where the model is the perhaps the weakest i don't see why it's not anywhere near the contact points as it breaks then all the stress is transferred onto the opposite side right where this is kind of held together so you know perhaps a thicker nut would be an interesting test to see 
if you had just a thicker nut here, then the stress can transfer into the threads. Not sure. The pin though, on all four tests, coming out, coming out all right. So as you can see here, all the carabiners exhibiting somewhat similar traits in the areas in which they broke. So that's kind of, uh, I see as a positive at least for my testing purposes, that they all broke in the same spot. Perhaps it had to do a lot with how welded together or how fused together the filaments were. You know, maybe a higher temperature would make a difference there. And you know, taking a look here at the PET G, uh, the PET G doesn't seem very layer, layer liney at all on the inside. Maybe a little bit more so with the ABS. Perhaps that's what contributed to its ultimate failure. And very layer liney here with the nylon carbon fiber. But overall, Great performance, especially from the nylon carbon fiber. Get these out of the way. Great performance from the PLA and the PACF, but our winner undoubtedly is the PLA. So certainly kind of a surprising to me that once again, similar to the previous test, PLA coming out on top. Not only is it the cheapest of the filaments, even though PETG is basically the same price, uh, it happened to be the most strong. And so again, if you're thinking of 3D printing something like this, that's going to carry a significant amount of weight, then PLA may be the workhorse for you. Don't do it because you know I'm not. I don't assume any liability for this. Don't do this at home. Uh, but again, very surprised about this. And in the future, if I have a need, just an ad hoc need for some a carabiner or some kind of shackle or something like that, that's not going to be taking too much in uh, in terms of abuse. Uh, that's not going to be exposed too heavily to the elements and not going to be exposed to too much in terms of movement or vibration. Uh, then yeah, I'd certainly consider using something like this. Obviously, I'd prefer using something metal, uh, something that's made and manufactured to do the job. But again, if you're in a pinch or you need some kind of specialized thing, PLA. And of course, if you want to buy any of these materials, links are in the description below. Check them out. I've got several of them on Amazon. You just buy it on Amazon. You don't pay any more money, but I get a little commission from it. So that's our carabiner roundup for today. Let me know in the comments below what other things that you'd like to see tested, or if you just have generally a good idea for something that can be tested, something that's 3D printed, maybe versus its, uh, its comparable mate in the uh, real world, something that's manufactured properly versus something that you can just 3D print at home, hopefully for you know less money. Let me know what your ideas are in the comments below. Be sure to like this video because it's the nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals, see you next time.